Hi there. Today we're going to talk about building a RESTful web server in Python using Visual Studio 2022 and Flask. Now, there's a lot in that statement, so we're going to unpack this a little bit and talk about it. Let's start with just understanding what we mean by a web server. Now, you may be familiar with web development as it relates to something that would serve up web pages. This is different. Um, this is actually being able to make a request of a server that's running the web protocols. So it's a web server and what it returns is data. Um, and so this is a way that you can, for example, call um, a web service and get back information that it goes and gets from a database. So it, it looks something like this. We have a web server out there that's running um, HTTP or HTTPS. We have a client. Now normally our client is a browser, but you can just have a regular client written in code that will go out and um, interact with services on a web server. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So a request is made. The web server will process that request and send a response back. Now, everything that you do on the web is basically done using this technology. So this isn't something different than how web browsers work. It's just that we're focused on getting data back from the server and not just getting web pages served from the server. So the back-end code on these web servers is normally written in C Sharp or Java. Uh, you could find some in, in C++ or other languages that are out there for sure. Um, but typically C Sharp and Java. And the code, the code on these servers can access a database, it can do processing, and, and really it's anything else that just doesn't involve a UI. So it's, it's known as back-end processing or a back-end service or server. So sometimes you want a different language for convenience like Python for machine learning inference. So Python is is really what we would call a first-class citizen when it comes to um, writing code that would actually execute uh, machine learning inference. So what that means is you've trained a machine learning model and you put it on a server and you want to be able to run that model. You want to be able to submit data to it and get a, re a result back. And so it's this is kind of the main use case that I've run into where you need you need kind of a native language solution here because it's a lot easier to interact with the machine learning components in Python than it is in some other languages. That doesn't mean that you can't do it in languages like C Sharp and Java. Um, and so you don't have to always do it in Python, but it's an option. And that's why we're talking about it here. So uh, we're going to be using a framework called Flask that's a Python framework and it's used to help build web applications in Python. It basically gives you a set of uh, uh, an API that you can use to do that and this is a, a project that you'll find out on GitHub and there's the link and I'll put these links in the in the comment or, or in the uh, description of the video and then you've got documentation out there. But none of this is none of this is really focused on Visual Studio, so we're going to look at how we would do this in Visual Studio. And again, Visual Studio is a great development environment. It lets us debug even web services like this, and it works great. Now, there's certainly other options to do this. There's other development environments out there, so you don't have to do it in Visual Studio. We just happen to be kind of learning about using Python in Visual Studio, so I thought I'd share that with you. So let's go ahead and and um, let me let me jump over to Visual Studio. So um, when you start out uh, we're going to create a new project in Visual Studio. And we're using 2022. Now um, right here if you would clear all of your options and type Flask in you should see these options come up. 
And if you don't see that, what you want to do is come down to Install More Tools and Features. And you'll see this um, UI pop up. You should already have Python development selected, but if not, you'll need to select that. And then you can look. Um, you want to make sure that you have Python web support selected here. Okay. Now I'm in. I'm actually in the wrong thing. I'm in the 20. Uh, I was in the 2019 one because I already have this set for 2022. So. Um, so anyway, you want to have that web su support set. Okay. And then once you do that, you should be able to see flask come up now so what we want to do and I think we might have just removed it which is not what we want to do oh, there we go so uh, we're good we want to do a blank flask web project so we these the some of these will give you different uh, uh, built-in things and we just want to do a really basic thing here and just start from scratch so we're gonna do a blank web project and um, you can give it whatever name you'd like. Test um, Python web service or whatever you'd like. And you can include Flask in your name, whatever you'd like to do. And you go ahead and hit create and it'll take it a moment and then it will bring up Visual Studio. And you can see here that it has created for us um, a basic it's created a, a basic um, web server application using Flask and in Python so again this is in Python and so um, this is for this this is similar to how you might do this in .NET um, with ASP.NET Core or something like that, but here we're going to use Flask and Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So let's just look at the different parts of this code that it generated for us. So the first thing we want to do is look at um, the very top here and this is just an import statement and if you have other imports that you need to include and we'll do another one here in just a minute to import the requests from Flask you would add those in here and it also gives us a variable uh, for or an object for the for Flask itself so everything we do you'll notice um, uh, will be in the context of that right here specifically and then um, we have we have the code down here that really just starts up the development server for us and runs the application. So it just starts up the web server. You can just think of it that way. And then these are the individual functions that you might want to call in the web server. And we'll just have this hello thing to start with. So let's just run this and see what happens. Now, it's going to start a little command window over here to bring up the the development environment and then you'll notice it actually ran our application now it it didn't actually um, it didn't actually render a page a web page the way you normally think of it what it did was we just asked it to give us back a response so we did that we did the request we got the response back and it and it used this particular endpoint, this particular location to do that. So let's change this. Um, and you can see what I mean. Okay, so we'll stop this and rerun it. And again, it'll fire up the... And so you can see that any changes I make here are going to be reflected um, on the web page itself. So. We have a client, it, it's got a client that we can use to go and make these requests is what's really going on here. But don't think of it as it's building web pages for you because that's, that's not what it's doing, okay? Um, all right, so now uh, we could have 
a route on here, a different route. So we could do, um, for example, we could do something like this. We could do um, or we could call it greeting. Something like that. Okay, now let's run this again. Now by default it's just going to go to the root but if I do slash greeting, it will also resolve to that same location. So you didn't really see it resolve there, but it did. And so um, either one of those two will work fine. So if you wanted to add additional endpoints, you just add these, these chunks of code with these annotations to be able to do that. Okay. Now, one of the things that we, ob we, we often want to do when we're making these requests is be able to pass parameters. So we want to be able to pass data into the server, have it processed using that, those parameters or options, and then give us back data. So how would we do that? So it's pretty simple. Flask, Flask makes it easy to do. So let's um, take a look at uh, doing this. So we are going to, first of all, say from Flask, import, and we're going to bring in a request. Okay, we're going to need to use that, that uh, class. And let's see. Then what we want to do is we can easily pass parameters. Um, like let's say we wanted to pass the name through we could we could easily do this and so we can include that in the route so that it knows that a name is being passed through so that's kind of the the variable if you will and then down here we could put the name in because it's now going to, this, this annotation is going to take the value that comes to us and pass it on through um, to our code. And then we can do whatever we'd like with our code, right? So we could say, we could, for example, write Python code that does something like this. Okay, so let's run that. Let me stop it and rerun it again. And that's because I spelled it wrong. As you know, Python's a case-sensitive language, so try that again. Let's do it. Start over. Okay, now what you'll notice now is that it's saying, hey, I, d I can't find this thing you're you're sending to me and that's because we have to pass in oops we need to pass in the name of the the location that we're going to right so if we want a greeting there you'll you'll kind of see how that works so this is kind of doing some routing and now let's pass in a parameter okay so let's um Let's put this back the way it was, and let's do this. Let's say that um, we we want to um, be able to read parameters from the request, and so let's say message is equal to. Um, request, so that comes through on this request object, in the args section, arguments, and we say get me the arguments for, and then you just say what you want the thing to be, right? So if we're going to pass the, the user's name in, and we can certainly do something like this, and then here, we can do message like this. 
And so let's uh, let's run that. And we'll need to we'll need to include our name in here, so we're going to put that back in. Sorry about that. And put this. And then what message do we want to give that person? Okay. So maybe we'll just put a dash and then um, add the message that comes through. Something like that. And we don't want this to be name. We want it to be actually something like um, whatever the parameter name is going to be. Okay. So let's run this. Now again, because we're passing parameters through the the when it launches the app, it doesn't know how to do those parameters, and we're kind of demanding those parameters be there. So. Here's our parameter now, MSG, and then whatever we want. We'll see if we can get away with doing all of that. Okay, so we'll go ahead with that, and there you go. You can see that everything worked the way it was supposed to. Now, I did have a little bit of an error in the code here. This should be ARGS if you are following along with the code. So this is a really basic introduction to using Flask to uh, build a Python backend web service. But uh, the really cool part is, as I said, we have, we're, we're running this in, in um, Visual Studio. So what that means is as I launch this, and this is the, this is one of the awesome things about using um, Visual Studio development environment is we can go ahead and put our name in here and we can put our parameter in but I have a breakpoint set Actually, let me continue here. Now, let me do that. Let me refresh this again so you can see that it stops. So the breakpoint stops there, and then I can examine. And there you can see the message coming through and the name coming through. So a uh, very, very brief introduction, high level of just kind of getting this working. And we will go on and uh, show you some other examples of how you can do different request types, including post, um, how you can pass data through like that. And we'll just kind of keep going on that. So uh, hopefully this is useful and a little bit of an introduction. Again, I'll post the links to Flask, the Flask documentation in the description. Thanks for watching.